Stan, okay. Stan, I see you. Getting you in here. All right, here we go. Hi, Gabe. How are you? I'm really well. How are you? I'm fine here. Great to in... see you, my friend. Yes, yeah, the same. We are very far away. We are very far away. And I was just yeah. saying to people before you joined that we met. Um, we met in January, and uh, yeah, wow, yeah. just we went through something really incredible together, but uh, through the Vipassana meditation retreat and mm -hmm. getting to know you and really understanding kind of more of, of what you've been studying with the brain for all these years, I think it's really exciting today to have you on the call. So first of all, I would just like to welcome everybody to the Thinking of Art call series. It's something that I started um, back in March and to really give people an idea of you know, meeting new artists and, and interior designers and different uh, creatives. And this is the first time we've had a doctor on the Thinking of Our Call series. So I'm excited that we yeah. have Stan on to talk about creativity and the brain and uh, all of his incredible research and, and insight. Um, and and uh, so I know you guys are going to have a lot of questions. But with that, I just wanted to welcome Stan to the call. And just jump into, I know you, know you have an incredible background. I mean, he's a professor in creativity and innovation at the School of Business um, there in Buenos Aires. He's a faculty member and instructor in pediatrics. Uh, he was at Harvard Medical School uh, from 2004 to 2006. Um, his expertise and research in the field of science entails mainly molecular biology, genetics, related to the development of neuroscience, change, creativity, emotions and innovation. So um, he's also a best-selling author. So, and it's been published in how many languages? I think uh, <laughs> in English, Korean, Italian, Russian, and of course, Spanish. Yes. Amazing. Very, yes, very happy, very happy with that. Amazing. Well, I in, wanted to in, just jump. Yes. I Take mean, I time. just wanted to jump, jump yeah. right into one of my first questions uh, discuss creativity from a biology point of view, and is creativity a talent or a skill when it comes to the mind and the brain? Okay, perfect. So the <laughs> idea is is trying to understand, trying to understand first, uh, we can define what is to be creative, what, what is creativity, no? Because there are so many definitions about being creative. For this talk, just you and me, I will define it as when someone has an idea uh, and this idea has to have two characteristics. First, has to, to add value, add value to someone, mm -hmm. clients, mm -hmm. people, participants, uh, it has to add value. And the other is mm -hmm. has to be new, some novelty. Mm -hmm. Creativity is related with, with novelty. Um, for several years, different scholars, they were they were trying to find out why there are so many few people, very creative people in the world. Why are there are not so many Steve Jobs, Thomas Edison, Leonardo da Vinci, Bill Gates. Yeah. Bill okay. Gates. Why, mm -hmm. why there are few and not, not so right. many? Uh, apparently, the, there is no scientific evidence of what I'm going to say, but apparently it's because of school. When you are five, six, seven years old, you are creative. And then you go to a school, and um, most of schools, not, not every, but most of schools, they push your creativity back. They try to be you logic and math right, and right. history. So the idea is in the last 40 years, uh, scholars and researchers, they were trying to, to understand if, if you are 40 or 50 or 60, uh, what happened with you? If you feel that you are not creative anymore, could you develop that? or is finished. So before to answer that, I will answer your first question. Both. Creativity is a talent and, there is, and it's a skill too. Why? Okay. W what is a talent? Talent is what, what science defines talent as that thing that science cannot explain. <laughs> science cannot define talent right now. I don't know how he does it. It's incredible. It's amazing. You know? She's amazing. You know? She has so many good ideas. Everyone loves her, etc. So these are people with a huge talent. 
And apparently, they are only 2% of the population that they are creative, very, very creative as a talent. So what science cannot explain. So what happened with the other 98% us, me, uh, maybe you, I don't know. So the idea is in the last 15 years, I was working in, in my consultant and I was working around Latin America mostly in trying to help people to develop creativity. Organizations, sport people, educators, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. keep, it really works. So I, I, don't, I will not say that you will become Picasso or Da Vinci, but what people understand is that creativity, creativity is a, it's like a muscle and yeah. you can work on that. Instead of going to play tennis or play piano, you can improve your creativity. Then we can discuss how, no? but it's both. It's a talent and it's a skill okay. that you can develop. So how do you develop that? So in fact, there are so many ways to do it. Uh, I was trying to co-create with the organizations, a method, a technique. There are, there are so many you can find them uh, on the web. But I was doing some research in papers in science, trying to understand how to improve neural uh, neurons and connections, how to mm -hmm. become more curious. You know, curiosity mm -hmm. is, is something that you need to in order to be cre creative. And then you can separate or you can divide the creativity uh, field into pieces. Then you have to do some research, to investigate, to understand what's going on. Then you have to have the famous brainstorming, a lot of ideas, new, ide new, new ideas. Then you have mm -hmm. to select what, what is the idea that I, I feel it could be a, a creative idea. Then you have to mm -hmm. try, you have to prototype your idea, you have to pilot your idea. So when you separate the uh, creativity into pieces, phases, into yeah. a process, for each part of the process, you have techniques. Some of those techniques, they are like science proof, and some are not, but people say, look, I'm trying this and it works. I feel more creative, I have more ideas, people like them. But of mm -hmm. course, it's a risk. You have to take a risk, it's a challenge, uh, till you don't try your idea, you don't know if it will work. So this is why most of the people are not creative. They, 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 they feel afraid of trying. So how much does it have to do with the environment? So say you're in a, you know, a, a, you know, a child and you, you have two really supportive parents that are supporting your creativity, that's great. But what if you're in a situation where you know, it's a divorced family, you have you know, children that you know, maybe don't have access to the best education, so yeah. what happens? Have you studied those scenarios? Through yes, of course. Yes, one of the, one part of my my master thesis is trying to understand what you are talking about, but not in mm -hmm. families, but in organizations. If you have a boss, or if you if you if you work in a place where the culture is, don't try anything new, don't think too much, do what I say. Uh, mm -hmm. If you fail go out you're gonna get in trouble so yeah exactly yeah. so co what, what you are calling we, we call the culture or the context where you are is 99 percent uh, uh, important in in, in order mm -hmm. to in order to dare to be creative you have to be mm -hmm. this supportive parents or supportive school or supportive boss or culture so it's, it's very culture dependent if you want to become more creative did you segment it off to kids that went to like certain schools, like Ivy League schools or schools that are focused more on creativity as well? No, I didn't do that. But what I was reading is, it's not a lot the school, it's, it's more your parents. Okay. There are, there are people that are very creative and they went to very rigid schools. But when mm -hmm. they went home, they have parents that they they have this culture or context that they say, try it, uh, let's see mm -hmm. what happened. Uh, failing is a good thing. You learn when you fail. So I, I will say that most of that, it happens between one and 10 years old. 
what happened in those 10 years, it will have a huge impact in who you are right now. But what, yeah. what I do, what I do is exactly the opposite. I work with 40, 50, 60 years old people that they believe that they are not creative or they are not creative, but having a process and practicing and doing every week, one or two years later, they are more creative. So that's, that's amazing. Wonderful. It's like a muscle. So, you can, you can travel, you can work it. And I know in, in your books, you've shared some of you um talk about some of the tips that you can that one can yes. go through yes the, my my best selling book is is i have three right now is the book that i that i was doing this research about creative creativity in english the the book the name is the the agile mind agilmente mm -hmm. the agile mind and i mm -hmm. have 30, 30 in the books in the book you will find 30 different techniques in order to motivate or to push your creativity on again it's not a it's not a it's not magic you have to try it and you have to go through the different techniques and and and, and i'm doing this for 10 to 12 years and sometimes you say wow yes this is the technique i need what happened is most of these techniques are opposite to the logic so when people are facing the technique and trying to do the technique, they feel awkward. They feel, this is not work. Why I have to do this? This is like ridiculous. This is not logic. So exactly. Yeah. Creativity yeah. sometimes is the opposite of logic. So you have to push you till the end of the technique. Try it, try it, and, and, and it works. So, is, so the tips are for how many days do you ask for the commitment? I mean, is this like a life, lifelong commit? I mean, for, or for how many weeks does one start that's to a, do it and start to see results? That's a wonder, wonderful question because it's exactly the same as going to the gym. If you go to the gym one month every day, you will see in your body that something is going on. But yeah. when you stop going to the gym, you go back. <laughs> yes. You know that. So this is yes. exactly, you are, you are improving your connections because you are, um, exercising your connection, you are practicing that, but if yeah. you stop it, you go back. So okay. this is a lifetime job if you want to be creative, like really creative. But for, for a project or for like a, a company or an organization, what we do is we work four or five months and we meet uh, two or three times a week and we push people to practice these techniques for four or five months uh, till the project is end and uh, a creative idea is is, uh, is born. All right, and you're doing that in Argentina, but are you doing it outside of your country right now? Yes, yes. Uh, right now, no, because of the coronavirus. You know, yeah. I, I'm I'm in my, my yeah. apartment from 110 days already. So, but uh, in in a normal time, I do it for mostly Latin America. Uh, sometimes Florida, Miami, and Spain. But uh, most of my clients, or so most of the people that I work with are in Latin America. Can you do some of these during, with Zoom or any kind of, with of course. technology? I mean, is of that, course. have you been doing that a little bit as well yes, during the yes. quarantine? Yes, yes, because I have to adapt my, my work for yeah. in, in, this, in this new normality, no? Yes, we, I was doing that. Yes, and and it's possible because I send the techniques to the people. If you want, when we end up this with call, I can send you a PDF with some techniques, and you can share with uh, whatever you want. You know, it, it's it's a question of trying, mm -hmm. and I think the most difficult thing is what is my challenge, and which of these I will send you sixty four techniques. Which of these sixty four techniques? I can use it with my challenge. You have to mm -hmm. match the technique with your challenge. Not okay. every technique, not every technique will match with your specific challenge. So right. you try, doesn't work. Different one, doesn't work. Different one, ah, I have new ideas here. This okay. is what we do. All right, beautiful. There are so many questions, so I want to try to get to some. Um, okay. Michael asked, are there interactions between 
creativity and socioeconomic status? Nice question. I, I, I'm here in my country and in Uruguay, uh, I was working for five years in three different schools, mm -hmm. a very poor one, a mm -hmm. middle class one, and a high, high class uh, schools. So what I find out is that problems are very different. But when you use the techniques working with teachers, parents, and students, they can improve, even if they are from lower classes or higher classes. Uh, yeah. It's a matter of intention. It's a matter of practice. It's a matter of belief. I really need a new idea or a creative idea in order to solve, for example, this problem in my school or in my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. But I, I really don't know if there is a relationship with uh, Michael is, is asking. I am telling you my experience. Only. Okay. Um, next question. Do you feel those with traumatic brain injuries have a more uninhibited perception in regard to art and creativity. Um, they're asking from a perspective of critical care, nurse, and psycho uh, psychology brain injury rehab. Wow, ask me again. I, I, I didn't understand the question. Yeah. Okay. Do, uh, do you feel those with traumatic brain injuries have a more uninhibited perception in regard to art and creativity? Okay, so, First, remember that I'm a biologist. I'm not a neurologist or a psychiatrist, so it's a totally different field. Okay. Or a, sim okay. a similar, a similar is, is, is my cousin, but it's not my field. Yeah. So it is true. It is true that when when you have some trauma or some injuries in your brain, uh, your perception about the the world changes, and that could that could help a lot in order to be more creative. And this is the explanation why drugs. When people take drugs, I'm not saying that it's good, but with some drugs, they alter, they change your, your per perception of the reality. And that what happens is you are able to create more new things because perception is open. Uh, this sense. is explanation why, why some artists or people that they are very creative uh, do drugs no? in order to be more creative. It works, yeah. but it's, yeah. it's not good for your health. <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly. Uh, another question. In the world of sports, would you say that the brain takes an important role in recovery from an injury? Uh, so this question is not related with creativity. In the work of sport, in the brain? Yes, of course. In, in the world of Yeah, would you say the brain, it, it helps recover from an injury? Is it part yes. of that process? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, what we know now is that uh, what you are thinking the content of your thoughts, it would mm -hmm. help in your recovery, for example. We don't know exactly how much and when, but if you are trying to recover from an injury and you are thinking, this is very difficult, I will never recover, it will take yeah. me, uh, that's, that's bad. That's, that will not help. That's against of, of your recovery. And if you, if you think positive, if you are more optimistic, uh, in the meantime, you are, of course, doing your exercises in order to recover. The, mm -hmm. You will improve much faster. That's true. Okay. Can we go back to some of the examples of creative minds of people that uh, you mentioned and just talk about like some of their characteristics that stand out? Yes. So there is some scholars, mostly in U.S., that try to understand what they have in common people that are very creative. I'm talking about Leonardo da Vinci, okay? Mm -hmm. So they, the, what they found out is five or six things. First, mm -hmm. people that they, they have what we call in science, multiplicity of perspectives. They can, for example, see a glass and imagine a computer. When you and me, we see this, we are looking a for a glass, right? Or, or no? And they can, yeah. they can see a car, they can see a computer, they can see a castle, a lot of different things. And and you say you are crazy. This is not a computer. No, no. This is the new computer, the, the next computer. It will be round. It will have li liquid, whatever. So this is what we call multiplicity of perspectives. Most of yeah. us we don't have that. 
So mm-hmm. what companies they try to do or organization they try to do is to create teams and each member of the team, they have their own perspective, very different from the other member of the team. So instead of, instead of putting 10 people from marketing, they have one for marketing, one from sales, one from operation, you know, and they yeah. create they create a Leonardo da Vinci, 10 different yeah. people. Makes sense. Another, another thing, another characteristic they, have, they found out about these creative people is self-awareness. There are people that dedicate a lot of time in their lives to know themselves. Whatever technique you want to do it, meditation, uh, psychology, uh, going to the church, uh, praying, uh, listen to music, whatever. But now there are more than 1,000 paper, papers that they, they explain that the more you know yourself, the more creative you are. So this is very interesting. The other thing that they found out is those people, they have a lot of energy, a lot of energy. Imagine Picasso painting, no painting, 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 painting. Yeah, like nonstop. Yeah. Yeah. 60, 60 pictures by night, in one night. Mm-hmm. So they, they are people with a lot of energy, but sometimes they are very calm and relaxed. This is what we call in science, incubation no? when you are relaxed when you are calm in your coach no? or, or going with your dog outside uh, this is when you have more ideas the, the, no? the less attention you have the more calm you are more ideas you arrive to your head the other thing is those are guys that of course women and men that they work a lot creative people uh, they work a lot of hours, a lot. Mm-hmm. Day, night, they're working a lot. So, uh, but at the same time, they, they, they like it so much being creative that they, they feel like fresh people. Fresh, but working very hard. Yeah. And, and the last thing is most of, most of the people I work with, they relate creativity with playing. Let's play. Let's play in order to be more creative. Of mm-hmm. course, playing is part of being creative. You have to play, you have to let go and try, and I don't care if I fail, let's imagine a new world. But creative people, they have a lot of discipline too. Yeah. A lot of discipline, working so many hours a day, uh, having you know, my computer here at 8 p.m., I will try to write something or put in the painting, you know? Mm-hmm. So play, the combination, the correct combination between play and discipline is something that very creative people, they, they share. So would you say there's a strong, this is another question, is there a strong biological component to creativity that seems it is a natural born talent? I will say as, as every skill in the human being, some mm-hmm. people, they born, they, they born with that and some yeah. they not. W- what I'm sure is if you are one of those guys or not, when you get into school, it will get, it will get worse because you, you are not able to practice that talent yeah. that you, you were born. Uh, so, so I will say it's something that science cannot explain yet. And when science do not have the answer, in general, sci- scientists that we are, they have, our ego is huge. Yeah. We say 50% is genetics, 50% you learn how to be more creative. So okay. when, we don't have, when we don't have the answer, we say 50 and 50. But the, the real thing is we don't know exactly how some people are very creative and some they are not. This is another question. Does, does having a schedule help with developing a creative mind? So it depends. Uh, you should try. So there is not a standard situation. You, you cannot standardize. Uh, I need a schedule in order to be more creative. You have to try. Mm-hmm. For example, mm-hmm. in your agenda, you can put uh, 8 to 9 a.m., sit in front of the computer and write something every day. I don't care. You should try it. I, I know a, a very famous here in Argentina a cinema director that every uh-huh. night at 8 p.m. 
the, he has to be in front of his, his computer. He doesn't care if he's writing for a movie or not. He has that discipline. So uh, when we talk about creat creativity, we cannot standardize a perfect method for everyone. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What, 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 yes, it exists. And I told you already, and I will share with you, there are techniques. There are techniques that, I, that they, they can help you in order to be more open and novelty and take risk. Uh, mm -hmm. In general, your brain will say, be careful, say what you are saying for 10 years ago, uh, your boss will not like it, you don't have the money to do it, the technology is not ready for what you are thinking. So these are uh, common they're discouraged. Thoughts. Yeah, they're discouraging yes. thoughts. So exactly. as part of the tips, I mean, I want to get the book. I can't believe I, I don't have the book yet. <laughs> um, but... With, with, with some of the tips in training your brain and really listening to your mind, is it the tips are also advising you um, of how to listen to the brain whenever it is talking to you and how to, to deflect kind of the negativity? I will say that, uh, being very honest, I think that part is in my second book, which is okay. not in English. But of course, what you are, what you are saying is what we call metacognition is when mm -hmm. you think what you are thinking. And, and creativity is having ideas, great mm -hmm. ideas or new ideas, and ideas are thoughts. Mm -hmm. So when you pay attention to your thoughts, you can understand what you are thinking and you can start to change your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Not, you, it's very difficult to eliminate your thoughts because your brain mm -hmm. is thinking all the time. It's always but, thinking, yeah. Of course, but, but, but it's a very good question. You, one of the first steps is what, what am I thinking? What is the content of my thoughts? Most of the people, most of the time, myself, we are thinking the same every day. Mm -hmm. So in order to be more creative, you have to start to change, different, to think different. Mm -hmm. You have to start to, to think new. Well, it's changing the patterns of how your brain operates. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah. that's exactly, exactly what techniques helps you mm -hmm. in order to change those patterns. Exactly for that. Okay, so there's another question. Can you give us tips, techniques for being more creative? Okay, I will give you a couple. Uh, most of the organization and most of the people, they, they love the famous brainstorming. Brainstorming, let's have a, a, a lot of ideas, a creative ideas. So I will say, that when you want to, to have your own brainstorming with mm -hmm. yourself, for example, or with your team, don't try to think creative ideas, just new ideas. So at the beginning, don't push yourself to add value. Don't push yourself to think something that everyone will love it because it's very difficult. But yes. if you write down, 100 new ideas, I promise you that some of those ideas, they will have some material in order to be more creative later. Yeah. So I will say that a brainstorming is a moment to create a lot new ideas, not creative, mm -hmm. a lot and new. Okay. When, I work, when I work with people, I, I say to them, uh, 100 ideas in one hour. Wow. And, okay. let's, and let's, let's try a lot, very hard to be, to have novelty. I don't care if the idea is good or bad. I don't care if the idea we can do it or not. I don't care if the client will like it. The only thing I care is novelty, 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 novelty. It, mm -hmm. it is, it's, and it's very fun. Imagine, it's very fun. Okay. The, the, the other tip I can share with you very, very fast is when you have a challenge and you want to be more creative, don't think a solution. Don't try to have an idea. Write down questions. Ask yourself 50 questions about your challenge. I give you one week to think 50 different questions related with your challenge. And it's incredible because first we, we were trained to answer. We are not trained to, to ask. 
no? We are trying to respond, answer yes. yeah. ideas. So mm -hmm. push yourself, push yourself to have a lot of questions. And questions are related with curiosity. And curiosity is the mother of creativity. When you start to ask yourself one, two, three, 30, 40 questions about what is going on in your, in your work or in your project or in your challenge, mm -hmm. I, I promise you, you will find some material in order to, to be creative. I think those okay. are very good two tips. Oh, that's great. There's so many questions. Thank, thanks everyone for submitting them. Uh, here's another question. Sometimes I feel if something is right or wrong in my heart or belly, is that because of the neurons we have there? Uh, we are talking about intuition maybe right now. Uh, everything that you feel or we feel is about neurons. Neurons are feeling. Uh, but yes, I, I will answer in this way. Uh, if your heart or your belly or, or, or whatever part of your, your body is telling you something, uh, of course, that, those are neurons telling you something. Pay attention mm -hmm. to that. Pay attention to that. Uh, sometimes we we are trying to be very logic and going mm -hmm. through the logic to the analytical things, mm -hmm. and, overthinking. Uh, uh, yes, overthinking things. And and I think listen to your body. Your body is all the time giving you information about what's going on with yourself, with the people in front of you, with your with your culture, your context. So this is something that you can train too. No? It's mm -hmm. self knowledge when you. Right. The more you know yourself and your body, better decisions you you right. you make in your life. And it's changing those cycles because you know we're trained. It's just like you know because of the patterns of how we were raised and the environments that we we're in, we we automatically react in the same pattern in the same pattern. So you're saying to recognize that, um, and don't necessarily question that or put that away. Just accept it for what it is and just acknowledge it. I think this is the first first step, right? Yes, I will never put them away because mm -hmm. it's extremely difficult. Imagine, keep if I tell you right now, please don't think in a polar bear. You will think in a polar bear. You you will see it. You know? <laughs> yeah. So I'm when you it right now, <laughs> so yeah. when when you ask yourself or when you ask people, push those thoughts away. Don't think about that. That's wrong. The idea or the biology of the mind is change your thoughts, mm -hmm. replace them, replace one thought by for a different one. This one is coming with you from 20 years ago. Now you can decide that you can think different. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You can choose. I will think this. In this situation, I will stop thinking that, but I will think a different thing. Mm -hmm. Think about, doing yeah. the stop yeah doing the stop is not enough you have to replace it okay okay that's a good tip here's another okay. question there are things that the brain needs but your mind doesn't allow to get that for example a single person needs something but it's the religious doesn't allow i'm not sure if i understand that question uh, no okay. i think he's talking about beliefs so beliefs uh, what do you believe so the, oh, okay, yes, uh, to the same. W when you grow up, uh, because of your parents and your your house, your school, your your culture, your country, you mm -hmm. start to believe education is like this, love is like this, uh, politics mm -hmm. is like this. So those are beliefs you have. So it's true that sometimes you cannot be more creative because your beliefs tells you. You cannot be more creative. You mm -hmm. are a logical person. You know math. You have to be an accountant. You have to be yeah. an economic. So that, those are beliefs. This is not true. But the, your brain don't know what is true and what is not true. The brain, the only thing that knows is what are your beliefs. So sometimes in order to be more creative, you have to face your beliefs. You have to challenge them. I say, okay, I was believing this for 20, 40, 50 years. I want to change. And mm -hmm. you can do it. But of course, it's painful. Sometimes it's painful. Yeah. Well, it's like people that are, you know, that have addictive personalities. 
first step is accepting that you have you have a problem, you have an issue. Yes. And and, and sometimes it. yes, and sometimes you cannot solve it by yourself. You need you need mm -hmm. help from a, a professional, of course. Yeah. Um, do people that are optimistic are they more creative? Yes. Yes, it's, there are a lot of studies about that, and the answer is completely. Of course, there are pessimistic people that they are creative, but the better you feel, the more optimistic, positive, and realistic thoughts you have, the more creative you can be. Yes, mm -hmm. a lot mm -hmm. of studies about that. That makes sense. What are some other tips, because we're kind of running over on time, what are some other things that we haven't talked about that you wanted to share uh, with everyone? So I will say maybe that I feel sometimes that creativity is like a fashion thing. You have to be more creative. No? We need crea creativity for everything, and that's not true. So cre I see creativity as a process. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I need it, and sometimes I don't need it. So most of the people I work with, they come to me and say, I need to be more creative for this challenge. And I say, no, this is not true. You need more money for this. Or you need more people. Or you need to train mm -hmm. uh, something, you know? So mm -hmm. be careful with, with creativity. It's not for everything in your life. Mm -hmm. Creativity okay. is a process that, that you can apply or you can use it when you have a challenge that allows you to have a lot of different possibilities of or possible solutions. Uh, don't, don't use creativity for everything in your life. Okay. So I think an intelligent person can uh, distinguish, for this, I need to be more creative. For this, I don't. For this, I need to study. No, I sure. need to call someone. So There's... I think this is a good thing. There are so many great questions. Can we talk about anxiety and fear? Um, I think those are, yeah, those are two things that just popped up. So uh, I'm not expert in, 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 in those because I'm not a neurologist, but, mm -hmm. uh, but, but those are very common emotions. Um, right now, uh, we, we have a tendency to say fear is a, is a negative emotion or anxiety is, is bad. So mm -hmm. for a biology perspective, that's not true. Emotions are data. Emotions are information. Something is going on. Your body is telling you something. The idea is try to listen and to understand what's going on and what can mm -hmm. I do? Mm -hmm. Most of the people, they blame someone else. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, have, I feel fear yeah. because of, the, of, of my husband or my boss or my president, yeah. etc. So that's, your life is very bad. Your life is-, is But they're not, is they're not doing anything. Yeah. It's, it's you, you're exactly. taking on that suffering. Exactly. So yeah. the idea is, is for, for a biology perspective, again, I'm not saying the truth, I, I'm talking about a perspective, mm -hmm. is, okay, I'm afraid, what's going on? What can I do with that? My responsibility, what's, you know, is, is try to go inside, not outside. And, and that's a, those are very common emotions. The problem is not the emotion. The problem is the intensity. Mm -hmm. if, I'm a, if, my, if my fear is huge, I cannot think. Mm -hmm. And when I cannot think, I cannot solve anything in my life. And I will blame someone else. So the idea here is mostly emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. How to reduce the intensity of anxiety how I can reduce the intensity of fear in order to think better, in order mm -hmm. to think more clear. And those, and those, those are tips, techniques. Right. Yes. And those, those techniques are in your books, right? Or in your, which book? Those, I, I have in, in, the, in, the, in the Agile Mind, I have a, a chapter about emotions mm -hmm. and, okay. and, uh, and how they uh, affect creativity. But there are some tips. But if people are interested in that, I will recommend you a very, very famous uh, American author, uh, James Gross. If you Google James Gross, for mm -hmm. me, it's number one in order to regulate your emotions. Another very, very, very good scientist in, in America is uh, Lisa Feldman. Feldman, 
I think mm -hmm. she's in, I'm not in no, New York or in Chicago. You can Google Lisa Feldman. Uh, okay. You will find a lot of tips in order to, to regulate those emotions. That's beautiful. Can we talk about the 21 days to change behaviors? Is that, that's thrown out there a lot in the mindfulness yes, world. I, yes. In fact, I, I don't know why they say 20, 21 days. I, mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I didn't read the book. I, this is a very personal thought. I don't believe that you can say to anyone else, if you do this 24, 21 day, you will change. That's not true for me. Because we are very different, because uh, some people, they need more time. Some people, some people they, they need less time. So uh, I don't know any research that can, show, that, that can show you that in 21 days, you alter or you change your, your neurons or your, your connectivity. So I will say that it's a very popular book or very popular author. But for me, there are no a lot of science or evidence uh, that it works. Can you talk about your books? Your books? Yes. Uh, I, uh, unfortunately, there are only one in English, that Jail Mind is a book from 2012. It was, mm -hmm. it was a huge thing here in Argentina because uh, I, I sold a lot of books. I, I will not say how many because it's, it's huge, but uh, something happened in the field of uh, neuroscience Mm -hmm. uh, of course, in the United States, it happened like 20, 30 years ago. In my country, everything is, is later. But uh, it, it got a lot of um, popularity in Latin America and in Spain. Uh, and after that, I wrote a book about change. What biology knows about how humans, we can change ourselves. Uh, Joe Dispenza is someone mm -hmm. very popular there in, in America. Yep. Of course. Uh, and then I wrote a, a, a novel, a fiction, about the story of my grandfather. Uh, right now, I have a book, a new one here. I cannot show it, but I will. It's about emotions. It's a book, 600 pages about emotions. But because of the pandemic, because of the coronavirus, uh, it's in the deposit. It's in the bookstore. I cannot sell it right now. Okay. Uh, so always what I do in order to write a book is I spend one or two years doing research. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm a I'm nerd. I, I like to read papers. So I read a lot of papers about creativity yes. or change or emotions. And then I try to, to transfer that knowledge into a regular person. Okay. This is science. This is the lab. This is molecular biology. Explain me easy to me. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? This is what yeah. I li like to do. Well, your books, as someone just made a comment, your books changed their life. And it's such an inspiration. Um, so um, are some of these on Amazon? Is anything on Amazon that we can get? All, all. Yes, all, on all the books are in Amazon. Okay. Yes, and you guys can go to his, his Instagram page, for example, and, and research him, uh, Stan, and, and learn more about it, download the books, buy the books. Um, this was really informative and so helpful um, and so interesting. Thank you, and I really appreciate you taking time, my friend. And I miss seeing you. Thank you. I, I really want to come visit you and in, in, uh, in your country. So whenever of I'm course. able to. You are more than welcome. Of course, right now it's impossible, but yeah. either, either you come to my place or I would love to go to your place. Too. <laughs> or you come to Los, back to Los Angeles. Yeah. So, of course. Um, but thank you, everybody. Yeah. Thank you, Stan, again, for your time. Um, I'll you, share Pete. this to my IGTV so you guys can watch the replay. Um, okay. Message either one of us with any questions that you have. And uh, thanks, thanks everybody for joining. Thank you very much. Thank All you, right, Stan. See All you. right, I'll talk to you soon, my friend.